Maritime law, you understand it. I first became aware of it when I was in high school. I worked on a boat in Miami going to Jamaica. And we go out to the sea, we go to the islands, and we go to Ocho Rios, so we go around. And I learned from the captain that the biggest fleet in the world is not the United States or England, or who I would have thought. It was actually Libya. And I said, well, why is it Libya? That's absurd. It's a little country. Why do they have? He said, but that's where they register all the boats because the taxes are so low for the corporate, which I believe is why they wanted to get rid of Gaddafi. I don't know. I'm not. One of many reasons, no probably. But. Yeah, but I, you know, but the biggest fleet in the world was registered under Libya because out in the open sea, the law is completely different. There's a 12 mile, I believe, from any country in the world. There's international rulings that from the land, the bank. Okay. which goes back to the letter, you, you put your money in a bank. You put currency in a bank. Current C. The current is on the C. It's currency. You put it in the bank. Maritime law and the history of maritime law affects commerce. It's all about commerce. Because on land, each country had its own individual set of laws. France might have one set of laws, uh, Scotland would have another, Portugal would have another, China would have another, but on the middle open sea, it doesn't matter. So uh, currently, I believe there's a 12 mile offshore, then there's another out to 20 miles where if you have you, the land, the nation whose land that is, control those laws are applied to the sea in that 32 mile uh, area. I believe it could be 30 or something like that. The, land, the lands of America would apply to that land offshore of America. The lands of Canada, offshore. But out in the ocean, it's up for grabs. Because who, who can say what, what's where, who's who and who's up? Because it's all completely up. So when they had these, England had these maritime laws and they created these maritime laws to protect shipping, to protect the trade. So maritime laws, to my understanding, although I'm not an absolute expert on this by any means, to my understanding, only affect commerce. And they're all about commerce. So when someone, like, uh, uh, and you, when you think about it, you think about a lot of the terms, like uh, on a ship, you have a deck. Well, a deck of cards. And during the 1800s, the planks on the ship, the, board, the wooden boards, uh, it would, were called deals. It was a deal. A piece of wood would be called a deal. So the carpenter would cut you a deal, meaning that your, if your deal was close to the captain, you'd get a better chance of getting your price in bartering. So they were cutting you a deal, like in cards. The deck, you cut a deal, or in business, they cut a deal. It goes back to shipping and maritime laws back in the 18 and 1700s. And a lot of the banking terms like bank, currency, when you begin to break down linguistically, all the terms that we use and you begin to see the historical antecedents it starts to make sense so maritime law is basically a law of the sea and the laws are very different in that situation on the land the law of the land is one thing the law of the sea is something else completely different and it seems as if the empire during the days of uh the sun will never set on the uh on the you know the British Empire or something when they were in India, mm -hmm. all they imposed that system on the United States colonial government through Alexander Hamilton who now which I think why so, so we're talking 1800s we're talking 1800s yeah I don't know I, I don't propose to know every you know detail of maritime law I know yeah but as far as I can understand it that that was what England did through all the colonies in India and uh, in the, of the American colonies. And they, because the colonies basically said to King George, we're tired of being in debt to your currency system. We want to be sovereign. We want to be free. And we're going to create our own currency. When England, we spoke about this last time, I think, uh, created two currency acts, 1861, 1860 something, which is what caused, according to Franklin, the American Revolution. They said, no, you're not. We're going to create our own money. And England said, no, you're not. And then they tried to impose their currency, their maritime laws on the United States, creating their own court system, 
great where the captain is a the captain on the ship is the judge on maritime law. So in a court system, the judge plays the role of the captain on a ship, arbitrating two disputes between two, two different parties, just as a captain on a ship would out in the open sea. And so that's basically what maritime law is as for a general uh, overview. Thanks for watching, everybody. And if you want to help support more videos like this, please go to the PayPal link attached and donate $1. Thank you.